This video is the final step in using A1 Web Stats to better understand how relevant people navigate through your website after landing on specific pages. Previous videos gave an example that got us to this position. What we did was to define a landing page of interest, which you can see in the filter here. We eliminated junk visitors. For example, we eliminated visitors from certain countries and with certain tags. And we ended up in a position where we look at the data here and we feel quite sure that within this date range, these people, this 117 results, were people who landed on that page and they were potentially relevant to land on that page. What we're going to do now is go through each of these visitors to get a better understanding, effectively to put ourselves in their shoes to see how they navigated through the website which enables us to think about ways that we could improve the website and the way it's marketed. As you can see here, we've got 117 results. So we're going to change the number of results per page to 100 to get them as many as we can up on one page. You might think that 117 visitors is quite a lot to look through, one after each other, to get an understanding of what these people did on the website. You could possibly analyze a smaller date range than the one month we're looking at here. Our view though, is that you filtered the data to get just the people that you think should have landed on that particular page. If you look at your inquiries related to that particular page that they landed on and compare the number of those inquiries to the number of visitors, then if that percentage is quite low, that it's very much worth you looking through these visitors one by one to really get a good understanding of how they used your website. Only by doing this will you be able to make positive change that would ensure that more of those visitors will make contact with you. To make the analysis a little bit easier, what we're going to do first of all is see how many of these 117 people who landed on this page only went to one page and no further. Generally, if someone goes to one page, it could be seen as a bad thing. So what we do is change the maximum number of page visits to one from zero by clicking here. And we see that we've got 58 results now. 58 out of the original 117 is 50% of all those visitors going to one page and no further. By quickly scanning through the results here, we can see that many of these ones come from Google AdWords. They type specific keyword phrases and yet they've still only gone to one page. This could imply that there is a problem with the way Google AdWords is set up or that there's something about the page itself that is not encouraging them to go beyond the page they landed on. In this case, because 58 out of 117 is quite a big number, it would be a good starting point to focus on what the Google AdWords is saying in the adverts and the keywords being used, first of all. Having identified the most significant problem here, which is effectively half of the visitors go no further than the page you landed on, we are at least aware of the fact that there's such a high bounce rate. We can start analysing this data in two ways. We could bring back all the results, all 117 of those people who landed on that page, and look at them one by one. But perhaps we should instead focus on just these, the 50% that went to one page and no further. What we can clearly see is that most of these people came via Google AdWords. They typed something in, saw an advert, clicked on it, landed on the page, but for whatever reason they didn't go any further. If we look at that page, the page is made up of a few parts. There's an introduction to what they can offer, including the expectations of the amount of liquids that would need to be filled. It breaks down this overall category of cosmetics and toiletries into sub-levels so that it's clear what people can fill. Then it gives an indication of customers of that particular service and some case studies. And then there's a footer at the bottom. Overall, that's a pretty good way to structure your website page. So if we look at this visit, for example, the first one that went no further than the landing page, 
we could see they were from Cyprus. They searched for nail polish filling machine and they went to one page. So we try and put ourselves in their shoes and we think nail polish filling machine and we go to this page. It doesn't specifically mention nail polish, it does nail varnish, but the implication is there. And within these case studies, there isn't anything that specifically says it's about nail polish filling. And so maybe there might have been an opportunity to put more in there that gave people a reason to click through to look at the case studies. But perhaps most importantly, although it says worldwide reach, it's not that clear that this company has provided services to people in this part of the world. And maybe that's one thing that these people are interested in. Can they be helped within their country? But we don't make judgments based on just one visit. So we look at the next one. In this case, it's from the UK, um, which is where the business is located. So there should be no problem with location. They search for cosmetic packaging equipment and they've gone through to that particular page. In this particular case, it's feasible that it's Google AdWords that's triggered an advert under a certain search phrase. And cosmetic packaging may mean more than just filling liquids. It might mean something else which could have been in the mind of this particular person. So that may be pretty obvious to see why that person didn't go any further than the landing page. Here's another one from the UK, nail polish filling machine. Again, that person didn't go any further. So you start to think these phrases that people are using, nail polish, is that perhaps better than nail varnish? And could there be an opportunity to create a case study that refers to nail polish filling here? So we recommend that you go through this process, trying to put yourself in the shoes of that vista. Let's have a look at this one. This person's from Egypt. They search a perfume filling machine and they got no further than the landing page. Now we don't know how far they went down this particular page, but if we think about perfume filling machine and we go down here, it does say that they fill perfume. However, again, maybe there's an opportunity to focus the wording below one of these case studies as referring to perfume filling that will keep people's interest. And as already noted, they were from Egypt, so they may still be thinking, who have you helped in my country before? And therefore, there's an opportunity to do more with this down here or put something else within the page that makes it obvious that they do help people all over the world. Without wishing to labor the point, although it takes time to go through these and look at them one by one, and then look at your website landing page, things will start to click into place. You'll start to make connections with the people that came into the website and what they were looking for, and the fact that they only went to one page and no further. There's sometimes a bit of confusion about the fact that we don't show company details for the visitors. When you're looking at data like this, you're looking at the overall picture of where everyone is going after they landed on a certain page. So this one, for example, has got nothing meaningful related to whoever it was that came into the website. Okay. Um, however, we know they search for perfume filling machine. And if we look at device here, it's very clear they were on a mobile device based on the monitor resolution. Now that doesn't mean that was just a person who was casually interested in a perfume filling machine. There was more than likely someone on a mobile device and at that time of day, they happened to be searching for a perfume filling machine and they click through from the Google advert. Now they could be, they could belong to a company of any size that is looking for a perfume filling machine. And it just happened to be the case that they were using a mobile device to search at the time. Therefore, all of these visits matter, regardless of whether you can identify them as organizations. You may not be keen on the idea of going through all these visitors one by one and comparing them to your landing page of the website. It's not exactly a fun activity, but it is something that as you go through and you focus your attention on it, you will see things that make a difference.
Moving away from looking at the single page visits, let's change the filters back so that we're looking at all data. What we've done here is filter the original results so we're looking at those people who got to a minimum number of two pages. We can learn much from those people who do go further than the page they land on. For example, this person used a search phrase, came in from Google AdWords and landed on the page we're interested in. They then went to the home page, back to the original page again, and then they clicked on one of the case studies, which is this one here. We don't know why they clicked on that particular case study instead of the other ones, because there's nothing obvious underneath it that gives them a reason to click on it, but they did. They spent a few seconds on there. Then they went off to look at specific machines, more projects, more case studies that they'd done, and they spent a fair bit of time on the website before basically backing their way out. It takes longer to look at the individual visitors, but again, you may be able to pick up some sort of clues based on the patterns they go through. Having selected your landing page of interest, weeded out the irrelevant traffic, and then spent time looking through those visitors one by one, you'll have a pretty good feeling for what's going on once people have landed on that page. You can go further than that. You can start digging deeper into how people will perceive your competitors, because you can pretty much guarantee that having been to your website, they will go to other websites as well. So let's take this phrase here, perfume filling machines. We put that into Google and it gives us various results. You can go through those results, clicking on the links and build up a list of your competitors. And for each of those competitors, go to their page that's the equivalent of your landing page. So here's the pay-per-click advert that brings them in to a particular page that talks about cosmetics filling overall. And some of these organic results have specific pages. So we're going to look at these. And what we're doing here is directly comparing their page to the page on our own website. So for example, we're talking about perfume filling and the page that you go through to here has some messages that are quite important. Here it talks about them representing 80% of the perfume filling machines in France. And they talk about specific brands that they certainly imply that they filled. Underneath that, they have the specific machines that fill those perfumes. And they also add more by talking about perfume miniatures and so on on the page. Now, if you compare what's on that particular page to what's on the landing page here. This is generically talking about cosmetics and toiletries. And perhaps there's scope to create specific subpages in this website that focus on specific products such as perfume, for example. Looking at another one of the search results under perfume filling machines, we find this particular page very much dedicated to perfume filling machines. And they refer to it here, and they also have the names of the machines. To be honest, they've not done enough because you can't go into any more detail beyond that. And they're also not talking about their various customers. But they do actually have a dedicated page to perfume filling. If we look at another one of the search results, we see here that there's a company that says they do perfume filling machines and it would appear that this is just a page that is generic and has been created for SEO purposes, but it doesn't actually have any substance to it at all. It just throws perfume filling in throughout the page and they've probably got other pages on their website that do the same. So from an end customer point of view, there's not much value there and they soon see that and they will exit. So the purpose of what we're doing here is to go through several competitors that appear in Google results and to note down aspects of their pages that are quite strong. It may be elements of text that are strong. It may be the fact that they show you the actual machines that fill perfume. There may be many different factors that apply to your individual business. What you end up with 
from going to website to website to website is that you get several elements that these websites are doing better than your own website. You then take all those elements together and you find a way to build those into your website, whether that be adapting the existing page that people land on or whether it be creating specific sub pages for particular products or services that you may offer especially when you're sending traffic from Google AdWords. To further reinforce this, let's think like a potential buyer. They've typed something into Google and they have plenty of choice of what to look at. They're going to go through a process that is no more complicated than scanning down, clicking on some and not on others. For example, they might not even bother clicking on these first two adverts because they don't specifically mention perfume that they search for. They would click on this one. Probably not that. They may be interested in the images. And so if you see images coming up in the results, you might think that you need to do something with your website to get your images in there. Specifically, if you, in this case, you had an image of a perfume filling machine. And they're just going to go through each of these websites one by one until they find something that appeals to them. They might get down to something like this, which is a video, which actually talks about filling perfume. That's perfect for SEO. But each of those potential customers who comes to your website has or will go to other websites as part of their journey to find what they're looking for. So when we're looking at data, we always have to ask ourselves the question, What's in their mind? What have they looked at before? And what are they going to look at afterwards? And does this website have a chance of converting them on the basis of what they see? Now, if you go through that recommended process of looking at all these competitors' websites and getting the best out of them and building them into your website, then people in the search results, however they go up and down those results, if they find a combination of all the best bits in your site, then there's no reason for them to consider the other websites that they're looking at. You may be asking yourself the question of why you would bother to use A1 Web Stats to look at a particular landing page, weed out certain types of visitors, and go through a lot of analysis just to get to the point where you can only see the relevant visitors landing on that particular page. You'll be questioning it, because you'll be thinking, well, actually, you can just go off and look at other websites who offer those particular products or services and then create something strong within your own website. And you could certainly do that. What we tend to find is that businesses who want to make changes to their website need to have plenty of justification to do that. If you went down the path of looking at your website and compared it to competitors, and try to get internal approval to make some big changes to the way your website works, you might not get the support you require. However, when you're using a system like A1 WebStats, you can definitively prove that those website visitors aren't getting to where you want them to get to after they land on your website. And it's that evidence that you sometimes need to put in front of people in order to make the changes that you know are going to benefit your business. Obviously, we appreciate this is a huge subject, and this is just one example we've used for the purposes of creating the series of videos. We're here to help, and we genuinely care that our customers get the best results from the websites that they can. So please do challenge us. All you've got to do is go through the processes of this video, starting at least to identify your landing pages of interest, then book in a call with us, and we'll take you through our view of your landing pages and how well they're performing, including the forms of advertising you're using to get traffic to those website pages. Taking you through just one of your landing pages, including looking at some of your competitors' websites, you're guaranteed to get useful information from our input that will help you make positive changes within that part of your website. You'll then be armed with the knowledge that you can use the system to do the same for other parts of your website that act as landing pages.